So hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 6-1, a discrete Bayes filter example. So remember we had a full lecture during week five on discrete Bayes filters where we looked at using histogram bins in order to represent the posterior belief of the robot. So here we will look at an example of implementing this in MATLAB. So our problem statement includes the following. So we're going to implement a discrete base filter for the motion of a robot in a 1D world that is constrained by that world. So they assume the robot is located at cell 10 in this 1D world with 20 cells. So the robot can only travel back and forth between cell 1 and cell 20, cannot go outside that specified area. So assume further that the robot can move forward and backward in this world, but that there is some motion error and sometimes the robot may even fail to move at all after being given a motion command. So the way that we represent that error, for example, if the robot is moving forward, is we say that there's a 25% chance the robot will not move at all. There is a 50% chance that it will move forward to the next cell, or there is a 25% chance it will overshoot the next cell and it will move forward by two cells. And there's a 0% chance that the robot will move forward more than two cells or move backwards. And the same probability stands whether the robot is moving forward or backwards. So then we have to have some edge case situations. For example, if the robot is at the last cell in the world or the next to last cell in the world, then we will state if it's at the last cell in the world, which means it's at cell one or 20, and if you give it a backward command at cell one, there's a 100% chance it stays at cell one. Or if you give it a forward command at cell 20, there's a 100% chance it will stay at cell 20. Then we have to have a case for near the last cell. So that would be if the robot is at cell two and you give it a backward command, then there is a 25% chance that it will stay at cell two and a 75% chance that it will move to cell one. Or if it's at cell 19 and you give it a forward command, there's a 25% chance it stays at cell 19 and a 75% chance that it moves on to cell 20. So we are going to build this model in MATLAB and then see what happens if the robot starts at cell 10 and we give it nine forward commands and three backwards commands. Let's take a look. So here we have our MATLAB screen, and the first thing we're going to um, talk about are the functions that we have to create in order to make this work. So the first function we, we create is called visualize the belief where we pass in the map with the probabilities. And to start out, we put the robot position at one. And then we have a for loop that increments from two to the length of the robot. And if the robot position is initially at one, we make a bar graph that shows the robot position versus the map with the probabilities. So you will see as the robot moves, then this um, plot of the probabilities will move as well. But as an initial starting point, we just put the robot position as one. And we have the X label as position and the title as probability. And we limit the X axis to be between zero and 20 because the robot can only move between one and 20. So now our next function that we created is called move forward. So in the move forward, we are going to put in our probabilities where we can freely move forward, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, near wall, move forward, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, or at the last cell, the probability is 100%. So then we create a new map based upon the length of our map, which is 20 cells. And then we have a convolution for any cell location that is between one and 18. We convolve it with our free move forward. Then if our cell location is at 19 or 20, we convolve it with our near wall move forward. Or if our cell is located at 20, we convolve it with our next to wall move forward and then we add these temporary values into our map so we would have new map plus temp one then we would have 
new map plus temp two, where it's only replacing those values near the wall, and new map plus temp three, where it's only replacing those values at the end of the wall. The only difference between that function and our backward function is that we are going to do it in reverse. So our move backward, new, near wall move backward, and next to wall move backward are exactly like the forward ones. But we are flipping our map from left to right to make a reverse map. And then for our new map, it's the same length, 1 to 20. And now we convolve it with flipping from left to right our move backwards, flipping from left to right our wall move backwards next to and near the wall. And then at the very end, after we find our convolutions, we once again add it to temp one, temp two, and temp three. And then we flip it back the other direction in order to have our values for the robot moving backward. So now that we have our functions, if you come into the main program, the problem statements at the top, just to remind us what that was, clear all variables, close all figures. Our starting position of the robot is at cell 10. We make the map that shows our starting position at cell 10. Then we move forward for our nine steps by calling our function, and we move backward for three steps by calling our function. So let's see what these three figures look like. I will put these in three different sections so we can run them individually so you can see that. So I'll do one section here and one section here. And so here, when I run the first section, here's what we get. And there is our probability is 100% that the robot is located at cell 10 because that's the starting location. So that's our ground truth. Then here is where the robot would most likely be or the probabilities of where it could be after nine steps forward. And what you see here is that there's a 60% probability that the robot is actually at cell 19 as we would expect, but there's also some probability that it actually overshot to 20 or it undershot to 18. And there's a less probability that it's at 17, 16, 15, and 14. And one way that we check our work is the sum of all these probabilities should approximately add up to one. And now finally, if it's at cell 19 and we send it back three, where is our robot now? And so this is where if we run this last section, we now see that our robot has landed at cell 16 with a little bit less probability now, maybe about 34% probability that it's at cell 16, but there's still a pretty good likelihood that it may have overshot and been at 15 or that it's at 17. So this concludes our discrete base filter example. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you've enjoyed, and please come back with me. Have a robotastic day. Bye-bye.